Good morning to all of you. Please be seated. See, Karen, I didn't mess up this week. It's a little inside joke that I have between Karen and myself. Let us turn to the lighting of the third candle, which is found in your bulletin. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. And thanks to God. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and we will light the candle of joy. Last Sunday we lit the candle of peace. We light it and the candle of hope again as we remember Jesus, born in Bethlehem, our hope and our peace. Wait if you'd like verse 2. Today we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. In their old age, a God gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth a son called John. John spoke to the people bravely in the desert, denying his own comforts and prepared to die for what he believed. John taught that we should share what we have with others treat each other kindly, and show God's love. He did this because he cared for people and wanted them to repent and find God's forgiveness. And now may please light the rose-colored candle, the candle of joy. Joy is like a candle shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the joy that God answered the prayers we have in Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, your witness, John the Baptist, grew up strong in spirit and prepared people for the coming of the Lord. He loved your people and baptized them in the River Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us to have the same love that we would be witnesses to him and spread the good news of your love. As Christmas draws closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome him. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord our God.
for your penance for the next three nights. Remember to say your evening prayers and also to reflect upon the importance of today's readings and the importance of John the Baptist who was the forerunner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we take the teachings of the Baptist to heart who prepared the way of the Lord in which we also prepare the way of the Lord. And now, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned and thought word and deed. I my fault, I my fault, I my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say, shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. You are near, O Lord. I pray that you give me life. I rejoice in your promise as one who is on your soil. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we lovingly prepare to celebrate the coming of your Son, enlighten our minds and fill us with your grace. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Cheryl, will you please proclaim the word? Please be seated. Proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. 
The word of the Lord. Rejoice, you just, in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. For God, our hearts rejoice. May we find his soul worthy of us as we have put our hope in you. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstance give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and make, may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved, blameless, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Cheryl. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. As a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourselves? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. So Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am unworthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Make better for Colonius and Sinistus. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord, and a day of vindication by our God. These words are taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today on this, the third Sunday of Advent, we light the third candle on the Advent wreath. The first week, the first candle was lit, representing hope. The second, representing peace. And the third, today, representing joy. Can you imagine Blessed St. Andrew, who went to his older brother, Simon Peter, with the news, we have found the Messiah. <clears throat> How much joy he had in his heart. For the many thousands of years prior to Andrew being on the earth, for him it was a special time. Everything that was said in the Old Testament was coming alive in his ears. And he wanted to share the joy. And so he went to his brother and said, We have found the Messiah. I wonder what Andrew and the other apostles must have felt. They were not present, save John, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. He had no joy, only despair. And so, also, the other apostles, their dream was broken. Their hope was dashed. In this, the Prince of Peace, they had no joy. We are more fortunate in that we know of the story. Can it be said that you are like Andrew? Can you say within your heart, according to your faith, we have found him? You know, I believe in the divine plan of God. I kid around with people and I say, I've been around the park many times, even without a horse. I have seen a lot in my 50 years plus, and I questioned everything. I had to break it down to be able to build it up. And I'm sure that there are some of you who realize that nothing happens accidentally, that there is a divine plan that there is a purpose for each and every single one of us. We are told by Paul, don't quench the spirit. But how many living in 
today's world quench that spirit given to you by God. How many of you realizing what we see in today's world have given up hope? You know, I was commenting earlier this morning. Do you know this coming Christmas of what I've heard there will be no Christmas celebration because of the war because of the killing that everything is toned down because of the threat of more terrorism You know, John the Baptist had a purpose. God had a purpose for him. He was asked today, make an accounting of yourself. Are you, a, are you the Christ? He says, no, I'm not. Are you Elijah? No, I'm not. Or the prophet, I am not. So who are you? So that we can give an answer to those who send us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. If you were to be asked today to make an accounting of your stewardship, could you speak with the conviction of John the Baptizer and simply say in all humility, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. Is this not a part of our faith? To prepare the way of the Lord. To make everything straight. To receive the Lord. You know, we have all been baptized. But yet there was something more to come. John said, I baptize. And he baptized unto repentance for people to change their attitude for people to change their way I am simply the voice of one crying out in the wilderness the desert makes straight the way of the Lord you know John is not a fictional character if you look at the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus he wrote more about John the Baptist than he wrote about Jesus. And I don't know how many of you know, but Andrew was actually a disciple of John the Baptist. But yet, we read the story that John, with his conviction, was cast into a prison. And so while John was in the prison, maybe there was still a little bit of doubt. He said to of his disciples, to Jesus, are you the one who is to come or do we wait for another? And what did Jesus say? To paraphrase, we know that when our blessed Lord came out of the wilderness, he went to his synagogue, to his church, and he opened up the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me. 
That is what we know as the Messiah, the Chosen One, the Christos in Greek, or as we would say, the Christ. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. This coming Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent, is the Sunday of joy. So let us, as we prepare to make room for the Messiah within our hearts, to have a deeper faith, and to understand the importance that God had a plan, not only for John the Baptist, but he had a plan by sending on earth Jesus Christ. A portal was open where the spiritual touched the physical. That's why when we read the final gospel and we say, and the word was made flesh, we kneel out of respect for it is a kneeling that we also say to ourselves, to our families, by our faith, we have found the Lord. We have found the Anointed One. We have found the Messiah. We have found the Christos. And so don't quench the Spirit. Be alive in understanding that all your hope of immortality, all your questions of life after death were answered that day in which our blessed Lord came to earth. John said, I must decrease so that he can increase. Let our own selves decrease and increase in the knowledge of the hope, the peace, and the joy that our Lord and Savior came to us as an infant to bring to all of us immortality. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The adventure of Paphlonia Jesus Christus.
Eucharist offering, most holy trinity, which we make in the memory of the Passion, resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may they then, whose memories we honor here on earth, intercede for us in heaven through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God. You filled us with joy by the coming of your only begotten Son. Accept our offering and fulfill our hopes. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Christ our Lord and Savior. For through the promise of sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, you revealed your goodness and unending love. Sharing in the hope of the patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our very hearts. Therefore, we join this day with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating on ceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most only pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles, Remember your servants, O Lord. May we pray this day. For peace. May we pray for all those who suffer sickness and illness. May we pray for the suffering and the dying. And those who will die today, who will have no one with them. Let us pray this day for all abused and neglected children, all abused and neglected animals, all victims of violence both here and around our world. May we pray for all those who serve in our armed forces and ask God to protect them. And Father, we pray for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise 
for themselves and all their own for their hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and confirm this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, Make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty, from your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray in place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, 
and with laws patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching, have been following the mind in the example. We say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus Christ, preserve my soul, 
unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Receive the body of the Lord. Lord, what we have received unto our lips, may we receive mentally, and may this temple gift become to us an everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood, which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, and whom these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen.
You are my help and deliverer. My God, do not delay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we prepare for the coming of your Son, through the sharing of this Eucharist, enrich us with the grace to accept his teachings without condition and fulfill his will. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. May they roll. 